What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the 10-7 MMA. I'm DS, and I'm here with my guy, Dino Bam Bam. What up? What up, man? Just chilling, brother. How are you? We are Vegas ready. We are International Fight Week ready, uh, hence the shirts and the glasses. We got the vacay, vacay vibes going. That's right. We're chill. We're feeling real chill, right? Before we get into anything else, I just want to say, for those of you that have been here with us at the ground level, we appreciate you guys. At this time last week, we were at like 89, 85 something like followers, that, yeah. something like, I can't remember, our su- subs, I'm sorry. We're at 125 last time I checked. Thank you guys so much. We are very appreciative of that. Yeah. The, when I when I brought the idea to Dino Bam Bam, what did I say? As long as we're passionate about it, and as long as we keep doing it because we love this shit, and that's why we have been doing it, and that's why we're going to keep doing it, it will we'll be okay, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're not doing this to be YouTubers, be famous, whatever. We're doing this because we love this shit, and we just wanted to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you guys so much that have been here, that are commenting, that are subscribing. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, like you said, we're doing this because we love it. We're going to continue doing this because we love it, and we do appreciate the support. So Absolutely, That's man. amazing. So, And I don't know many other YouTube channels that have grown by 30% in the last week. Something like that. It's like, it's like 200% over the last like 30 days. Something, <laughs> something crazy like well, that. Well, thank you guys for that. The so, metrics, you know? So that that's all we wanted to start with. And on that note, aside from YouTube, yeah. where else can they find us, my friend? You can also find us on Instagram. Same name, V107MMA. Give us a follow there. And... If you, if you haven't subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you did. We just hit one milestone. Maybe it's on to the next one. Hopefully, knock on wood. That's what we're trying to do. So hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Leave us a comment. Let us know what's up. Do you like our content? Do you hate it? Do you hate me? Do you hate him? Do you like one of us? We want to know. This is International Fight Week. Mm. We are going to be putting out two other videos coming up this week. Um, Maybe three. This is a big video, and if, you ha- if you're just tuning into the channel, we are going to be going to Vegas for International Fight Week this weekend coming yeah. up. We're very excited about that. We're hoping to stream live, potentially. potentially. We're, we're definitely going to be recording some content. We do potentially have a fighter li- interview lined up still. Somebody who's fighting on the main card. We'll see what happens, but just want to say it one more time thank you guys so much for the support but on that note it's ufc 290 it's a huge card i also just have to say this i have to preface it with this because there are like six of my favorite fighters on this card your boys uh, oh my god like certified like literally like numbers one through five or six are on this card so really? okay yeah dead ass yeah you knew this i know i know a handful of them yeah, yeah. so i just have to say if you're if you're following this for betting advice because we do watch a lot of film, don't listen to me today because you know what, I may even give you some thoughts on like what I really feel. Yeah. But I can't go against some of my boys. Fair. You know what I mean. Fair. I'm a loyal dude. I love what I love. You know what I mean. I mm-hmm. I, I can't just like. But I'll, maybe I'll let you guys know. But in any case, anything else before we get into it? No, nah, man. Let's get into let's it. Let's get two ninety. International Fight Week, baby. Let's go. I'm excited. I'm pumped, man. Let's get it. Let's get right into it. According to tap- Tapology, the first fight of the night is Camuela Kirk versus Esteban Rebovic. And I guess I'll take this one first. I like Camuela Kirk. He's a, he's a good striker. He's very re- loose and relaxed when he fights. He's got really smooth movements. In a weird way, he reminds me of, of Connor at Featherweight. If that makes sense. And, and listen, before you guys get into the comments, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying he's Connor at Featherweight. Right. I'm just saying his movements and his stance kind of reminds me of Connor at Featherweight. That being said, last time versus Jackson, he or versus uh, Damon Jackson, he was doing a good job mixing it up, but eventually he did end up getting subbed. Of course, Damon Jackson does that to a lot of people. Yeah. But he also got wobbled by him, right? So, for me, Esteban Rebovic, he got kind of the short straw last time he fought. He fought um, Loic Razabov. Yeah. yeah, and listen, he's a decent fighter, man. 
in that fight though, he dropped Loic like three or four times in the later rounds. Yeah, he and was good as, at the end. If there was one extra round, he could have won that fight. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously this is hypothetical. So I just believe I just I wasn't a huge believer in Rebovix to begin with. Okay, I'll be real with you. I think I did pick him to win last fight. Yeah, we eh, did. I don't remember. Yeah, maybe I didn't, but either way, it was close. But I do believe in him, and he proved me wrong. He showed me enough last time out where I do believe that if he can rock Loic Razabov, Kamala Kirk has nothing for him on the ground. I love his check hooks. I think his check hook is his biggest weapon. He doesn't look like a guy that would have a lot of power. He has plenty of power. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Rebovix. I could see him finishing it by sub or KO, to be honest. I think I'm going to go by sub. In the second round, after he drops Kemuel Kirk. Fair. Um, I just want to add a couple things in. Um, the cardio for Kemuel Kirk has been a little bit sus. And with Rebovich, as you mentioned, he looked stronger as the fight went on. Man, absolutely. Very impressive to see like an undefeated kid coming up against a guy with a lot more experience than him. 100%. And Loic Rajabov. And, and to kind of just like... As you're getting your ass beat, start to do some some great work. He got late. dropped several times yeah. too. Yeah. So to do some work like that late, that was very impressive. Uh, I liked Rubivic the first time I saw his film. I, I still like him. I think this kid has the ability to be something in this division. With that being said, I am going Esteban Rubivic via KO. I think it'll be a little. You said the second. You said I said sub. sub I said a drop and a sub in the second. Yeah, I yeah. could see it late second, early third. I'm thinking he's he's a balanced fight fighter though. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I could absolutely. It's it's a mere matter of it's a moment, right? Yeah. It could. I say sub in the second. It could absolutely be a TKO, exactly, right? Like right. what's the differences he between a TKO a and a sub? Are and, exactly yeah. so slight, right? I like the kid. Yeah, me too, man. Moving on to the next fight of the night, it's Shannon Ross versus Jesus Aguilar. And as we go on with this card, you'll notice a distinct pattern, right? There's a lot of Australian fighters. A lot of Mexican fighters. A lot of Mexican fighters. There's a there's a couple South African fighters. Right, exactly. Right, so you notice some patterns. And, and I get that. The UFC often does that. Yeah. But please, let me know what you think about this one, Dino Baby. Shannon Ross versus Jesus Aguilar. All right, so the Turkish delight, Shannon Ross, a guy that I think we've covered maybe three times on this show. Weirdly, right? like, too much, yeah. Right, and, and that's, yeah, too much for me for sure. But anyways, he doesn't really belong here. We, we talked about that from the I have, beginning. I'm sorry, I have the same thing written Yeah, we, we talked about that yeah. from the beginning, right? He didn't really earn his UFC contract. He lost on the Contender Series. Lost on the Contender Series, came in, lost to Clayton Rodriguez, which, you know, whatever, pretty sure, good it's loss. Sure, it doesn't look bad. But, yeah, I mean, like... What gave him the contract? I don't know. Was it the one win? I think he had it, on I UAE? think it was the fact because the last fight, he, the last card he was fought, the it, card. yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. I think it was just one of those where it was a short notice fight. We need it, was, it was like a local guy, a, a recognized name, like amateur regionally, wise, and yeah. regionally as well. I think that was one of those situations. Hundred you know? percent. But anyways, as far as Shannon Ross is concerned, he is tough. I'll give him that. He's tough as hell. He's a grappler on the feet. He is very, very hittable for me. Uh, he seems to have a good chin, and he's tough as shit, but why do we know that? It's because he gets cracked all the time, right? So yeah, Exactly. Yeah, That's so a that, great that, point. It's, it's not like a great thing. Then we have Aguilar. He's a little short, thick tank guy. Good grappler as well. By the well. way, I just want to say, the shortest reach in UFC in, history yeah. for a man. What is he, 5'4"? He, he's, he's tiny. 5'4 uh, five, or 5'5"? Five, five, probably 5'4". Yeah. More realistically, 5'4". Right. 62 and a half inch reach. Yeah, that's crazy. There are a few women that have shorter reach. Yeah. No man in the history of the UFC has had a shorter reach. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, he's a grappler. What's weird, though, is he's known for his guillotine choke. Those short he arms. Loves, I have that yeah. right now. He, he loves the guillotine. You would think yeah. that, like, a guy with little stubby arms can't do that. but he It's because he's really strong. Yeah, he's very strong. He, he, he looks for that choke oftentimes, and he gets it. He has good power. The striking's solid. He does get brawly at times. So him and Shannon Ross might be interesting. Both guys looking for their first win here. I think Aguilar gets the win. He is just better than Shannon Ross for me. Whether he takes Ross down or Ross finds a way to take him down, the threat of the guillotine will always be there. And I think this is the UFC setting up a Mexican guy versus an Australian guy. Yeah. We know the UFC's pushing Mexico right now. That's kind of what they want on this and card. Australia too. They, uh, they Australia of too. They want but that. I think more of the energy's focused on Mexico, right? With the PI that they want to build there. Well, because there. that's like 
they're closer in the lead. market. They're the lead. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they know what they're doing here. I think they want Aguilar to win. I think Aguilar gets the sub by guillotine. I mean, you know, it seems simple, but sometimes, sometimes mm. simple is what it is. Yeah, man. I feel that. Um, yeah, you, you've pretty much covered it, man. I, again, like, like you said, I don't think Shannon Ross really belongs. You know, I don't, I don't think he's made for the UFC. He's pretty damn good, man, all things considered. But, yeah, even with the really short reach, I think Jesus Aguilar is really strong. He's really jacked for the weight class. It's not like he's, like, yeah. short-armed and, like, fat. Right. He's, he's short-armed and like, jacked, yeah. dude. So, he's he's a Mexican fighter. He's going to... For me, I see him coming in, charging in aggressive, swinging at Ross. I see a first round knockout, man. To it's be very honest, possible. Yeah, it's very. Possible. He, the one thing that he should be careful, of, and Shannon Ross does do this well, is the flying knee. He does have to be careful of that. Other than that, man, I see Jesus Aguilar catching him. I I just want to put the disclaimer out. There's not a ton of film on Jesus Aguilar. Right. I, I've watched his last couple fights as much as I could find. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But there's not a ton out there on him. He looked decent against Tatsuro Tider last time out. Yeah. So, for me, I agree with you, man. I'm going to go Aguilar. Instead of by sub, I just see him clipping Shannon Ross and getting the TKO. Let's get it. Like, end of the first round. So, we agreed on the first and the second. Exactly. Let's get it. Moving on to the third fight of the night. It's our first South African fighter. Yeah. It's Cameron Simon versus Terrence Mitchell. This is, of course, at 135. I yeah. guess I'll take this one first. Can I just throw something in there, though? Yeah, please, because Cameron? I'm looking up for my fucking notes. So. <laughs> Cameron Simon. Yeah. Man, he's such a cheater, dude. I dude, he loves to... striking dudes in the nuts. I have that written down. <laughs> two nuts, two nut pokes. shots on Mana. He got a point taken. Yeah, and then an eye poke. Like, dude... And I think but he, none did, of them he did looked, it on the Contender Series, too. He did, he did. But, like, but, every fight but, I've seen. But watching it, though, it didn't look intentional. But then when you find the pattern, it's like, is it, though? Like, have you just become good at, like, pretending like it's not? Well, then, he, remember, after the fight, he comes out and he's like, oh, guys, I just want you to know I'm sorry. Like, I'm not a dirty fighter. And it's like, you know when you're like, And then oh, next time I'm he's like, th- fuck your nuts, dude. Right, just like, it's like, when you gotta say, oh, I'm not this. Like, yeah. Come on, you guys all know I'm not. Yeah. You're, you're probably yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, fuck, true. You are that yeah. thing. You know if what I mean? Everyone's saying right. You're something. And, and may, people weren't even saying it like on like a broad spectrum. I know. But I know. He just brought it to light. That's even worse. Is it? You yeah, know. Maybe. You know when just like I just feel like when you're lying about something or you get, you're you're ashamed of something or you're trying to hide it. It's like you bring attention to it to kind of like make it a little smaller. You know yeah. what I'm saying? By the way, I just looked at the odds for this. Yeah. Minus 480 is fucking crazy. Yeah, well, he's going to cheat, so. <laughs> Damn, is that how you feel about him? Yeah. Okay. Is I don't that how you feel about Drickus, too? No, Drickus doesn't cheat. We'll, we'll, get, get, we'll get to it. We'll yeah, get to it. He doesn't we'll cheat. To. He's not a cheater. But minus 4. Also, I just. Camera's we just, we just had this conversation. It's fucked up to me. And let me know. Let me know in the comments, right? Let me know what you guys think. I feel that. What the? How is it possible if the odds on somebody who's the favorite, right, right are minus four eighty? How the fuck are the odds on the other guy plus three fifty, right? And that's not that big of a difference. We've we'll get to like when it's Bo Nickel, it's yeah. like plus twelve, whatever it's the like hell. Plus like thirteen hundred. It's, it's like absurd. Plus seven. It's, like it's like minus twelve hundred pl- to plus seven. Plus seven fifty. What's the other six hundred, right? A draw? No, because if you look up the odds for a draw, it's like plus 2,500. Yeah, always. Right. Yeah. So then, what's the other... It's fucked up that we let Vegas and the odds makers get away with this. Anyways, Cameron Simon versus Terrence Mitchell. Listen, Cameron Simon is very raw, right? He's very raw, but he's talented, man. Like, you, you like the kid is legit talented. He's so much younger... The nut shots are fucked up. Like, I hope he stops, like, just, like, hunting for dude's nuts, you know? Right. So, he's got really good accuracy with his strikes. He's got a good wide array of punches and kicks. He throws a lot of spinning stuff. He's shown that he has good cardio. The kid has got skills for sure. Terrence Mitchell, he actually lost to Kai Car France on the Ultimate Fighter. When, Vicious knockout. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. I was just getting to that. But, my goodness. that's That was, like, Kai Car France's, like... Best highlight of his yeah. career. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, he's 33 years old now. He's finally making his Uf- UFC debut. He's technically on a 12-fight finish streak. Like, when he when he gets the win, he's, he gets to finish 12 fights in a row. There's not a ton of film on him. I, was, I, I watched a decent amount, but 
just watching how easily Kai Kara put him out, that means something to me. I know it was a few years ago. I don't have a lot of confidence in him. I'm going with Cameron Simon by first round knockout. Cool. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because for me, Simon's a y'all's boy. I don't know if you like him. And you <laughs> I don't. I don't him, like him either. To he, be honest, he bothers me a lot. Yeah. Anyway, is it because the? It's because <laughs> of the cheating. It's because of the, <laughs> the nut shots and eye pokes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm hoping Mitchell wins. He's a longer bodied guy here. He's probably got more power, but you have to Long take care. Long body got the out of a killer. It's not, I feel that. Uh, Shout yeah. out Wheezy F. Yeah, absolutely. And the F is for Frankie. Frankie. Shout out Frankie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's my dog, by the way. For for pretty much nobody knows unless you know me personally, but that's so nice. He's a very nice dog. For by the way, this is the sacrifices that we make. I love Frankie. He's 13 and a half years old. He's amazing. Every time that we record this shit, it takes hours. And he's alone by himself, so it breaks my goddamn heart. But I'm glad you brought him up. I love him so much. But, yes, please. Yes, but like I said, I'm hoping Mitchell wins. Longer body dude, more power. But, Simon, you have to take him because, you know, he's probably the better fighter. He's got nice leg kicks. He's he's, he's not a dumb fighter. He's, no, he, he's, he's only wrong in the sense of, like, some decision making. Mm-hmm. But he's well-rounded. I like him. Yeah. Like, and, as a fighter, not as a person. Right. And And I expect him to win because of that stuff. And more so because he's going to cheat. <laughs> so, fuck this I love guy. that. I love that you're just sticking to your guns. Fuck this. And guy. that's what I respect about Thank you. Thank you, sir. Also, I just want to say, and we're gonna make this less than an hour. Yeah. How long are we at now? Right now. Man. I just want to say, I fucking love this guy. 17. I've been asked, I've been asking this dude to make to start this with me for like two and a half years. So I'm glad we're here. Anyways, let's get back to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fuck that cheater. And uh, I hope the other guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for sure. Yep. Moving on, fourth fight of the night. It's Vitor Petrino, the Brazilian, versus Marcin Pracnio, the Polish fella. Polish fella. What do you think about this one? Yeah. Uh, Vitor Petrino, he's a tank, man. He's got filthy power, scary-looking dude, yoked. I believe you've mentioned previously that you think he's on the oh, gear. there's no question. He's he, right. Maybe not currently, but... He was on. My it. God, he was on the gear, bro. Come there, on. There we go. So he's a striker. Uh, he's done okay on the ground, though. He's not special on the ground, but his athleticism has helped him. He's get strong. Out of, like, and his a lot, strength. Yeah, he's strong. A yeah. lot of like shitty, sticky situations. We saw that against Anton Turkali. What's his nickname? I forgot his nickname. He has like a really good nickname, uh, though. It's, uh, it's like it's, Loverboy or some it, bullshit no, like that. No, it's like more aggressive than that. Yeah. It's, it's the... Um, the ladies' man. It's like the like pleasure... The pleasure... Pleasure boy. The pleasure man. The pleasure man. <laughs> Shout out hey, to the pleasure man. More than anything... I know you lost that fight. Yeah. Does he have another fight lined up? Because that dude is litty, bro. Anton? Yeah. He's fun. But yeah, anyways, you know, Petrino looked good there. And then we have Mar- Marcin Pragnio. He's a vet. He has a karate background. <laughs> he does get brawly as hell sometimes. And he might be chinny. He might be chinny, and I and I do think he is. He has good power. He beat William Knight last time out in what was probably the weirdest fight we've seen this year. Dude, William well, Knight was... That was... I, I remember texting you. Yeah. You're like, cut this man immediately. I gotta, I gotta literally like look at my phone because you said cut this man immediately. Uh, I was so fucking and mad, dude. I think dude. they did, huh? I think they did cut. Oh, is he, is he no longer? In I there? think they cut him that week. Thank God, dude. Anyways, uh, I don't want to waste too much time on this, so I'm gonna put it to you this way: I wasn't overly impressed with Petrino last time. He did look like he he was solid. He looks like he can be a killer, like visually. Oh my God! And being 25 years old, we always talk about taking those steps in between fights and wanting to see massive improvements. Maybe that's what we get here. That's what I'm going to bank on. I say Petrino touches uh, Pragnio's chin, gets a KO. Pragnio's chin, as you mentioned, is sus. I'm worried, though, because we've seen a lot of these types of contenders lately kind of Especially struggle after last week. and fizzle out, right? Yeah, man. So, yeah, I- I'm betting on Vitor Petrino, and we'll see what happens. I, I think it would be good for the UFC. Yeah, by the way, I couldn't find the text because yeah. I'm sure I didn't name him by name because right. when we're both watching it live, you know who I'm talking right. about. This guy. Yeah, I'm like, this yeah. guy's fucking... I should have looked up pathetic, the word yeah. pathetic because I'm pretty sure I used that. Mm-hmm. That was a very pathetic performance. Very. In any case, I am... I was a bigger believer in Vitor Petrino after watching his tape for the last fight. Before the Turkali fight. Yes. Yeah. So. And I'm not taking too much away from him because I think Turkali is better. I, I was even at that time though. I wasn't like he's gonna f- he's fuck this guy up. And no, like, no, you were. Yeah, you were pretty. Like, I thought it was like a pretty close yeah. fight, but it was even 
closer in the areas that I didn't expect it to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not a huge believer in him. Turkali has a chin, right? Like for me, like again, it added more for him than it took away from Petrino. Petrino was wobbled by Turkali several times. Yeah. So all in all, close fight. You know, we saw that he has sheer power though, man. Like there's just not a lot of guys in this division that have that kind of power. When you're built like that, you're built different. And Prochnio is like hit and miss, man. Like yeah, for me, exactly. there are times when he shows up and he looks like he's throwing this wide array of strikes. He's using the leg kicks well. The kicks are like flying in general. He's doing a great job. And then there are times when he's like a little bit more apprehensive. I don't know, man. For me, I think Petrino is going to go for it. And I think he's going to get the KO, like yeah. a clean KO. I think so. So if he doesn't, though, if this does go to decision, I don't see Petrino getting the decision. If it goes to decision, I don't think it will. It's Prochnios. So Fair. Moving on to the next fight of the night, it is Edgar Shirez making his UFC debut. The Mexican versus Tatsuro Taira, the very highly touted Japanese prospect. Very happy we get to see Tatsuro Taira live because this we was weren't like supposed a, to. Yeah, we weren't this supposed was a to. Quick, yeah, this was thrown together quickly. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about that too. Who was he supposed to fight? I'll check that for you right now. Was it Loic? No. No. I don't even. Let's see. It was supposed to be Clayton. Clayton Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah. That would be dope. Listen, I'm not going to lie. After watching, initially, obviously, we're all biased. We're all human. As I'm going into this, I'm like, Tatsuro Taira is going to fuck this guy up. Yeah. Right? But then when I started watching tape on Chirez, I'm like, yes, he's 27 years old. He's coming over from Fury. He's making his UFC debut. He fought in Combate, which is a, a good promotion. Mm-hmm. He lost on Dana White's Dancing with the Stars versus Clayton Carpenter. So, for me, I think that's the biggest thing. He's got good technical boxing, good hand speed, nice leg kicks. But nothing on film really, like, stood out to me. Okay. He's not special anywhere. For me, I think the biggest difference is that Tatsuro Taira is not as much as, like, he's going to get the sub. Mm-hmm. And I'm going with Tatsuro Taira by sub. Chirez showed that he has... He's had five round fights, yeah. So I appreciate the cardio. I understand all that. He's got to be Tatsuro Tyra has to be careful not to get knocked out. I think for me the biggest difference here is the grappling. Chires is is decent on the feet. I see you pulling up topology. Should ninety six percent of people be picking him? Probably not, man. What are the odds on this one, Dino? Uh, it is minus nine ten for Tatsuro Tyra. Holy shit! Plus six hundred the other way. Listen, there's nothing wrong with a Tyra. That's why I have this. Odds are crazy. With a, with a with, I'm sorry, with a okay. Shirez, um, with a Shirez Trishan Gore two leg parlay. Yeah. Because like ten dollars, you're gonna make like a stack. It's like a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm still gonna go with Tatsuro Tyra. I just believe that he's gonna get the sub. I think the the grappling difference is vast. Yeah. Chires is no joke. He's not your regular, like, nobody making your UFC. I I've, I've believe much harder in him than the guy that's about to be fighting Jack Del Maddalena. Exactly. So. And, and I'm glad that you think that way because I do as well. I think Chires is a lot better than people think he is or know he is because I, I just think it's it's like a lack of knowledge. He's not that bad. I think there he's is, not bad, man. Right. I think there is a world that he can beat Tatsuro Tyra. That's why I respect watching film, man. Is because when I end up watching film, I go in. When I'm actually watching, I go in unbiased. Exactly. And then you're like, mm, man, like, like that's the difference between like us that do watch film right. and like even a good fan that you're not sitting. You're not sitting there watching fights night, fights pass. Like fights, right? And I do, but it's like yeah. I don't even remember those people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't remember the guy I saw fight last Thursday. Like, well, and then there are times where you're like, "Oh shit, this guy." You look great, remember, and then you look right. at the record of the other guy, and you're like, "Oh, he's fucking nine and eight. Exactly. Yeah. So my point here is, Chara's is pretty good, and Tatsuro Tyra's twenty three years old, man. Like he has looked phenomenal. And like you said earlier about those strides that you take when you're that young, right. that is a real thing. That's not a thing that we've. Right. Concocted. No, like, no. Yeah. You, you expect to see those. But then also with youth, there is inexperience. There is mistakes. Like, you know, younger fighters are going to make more mistakes than their veteran counterparts. Yeah. So with Tatsu or Tyra, with these young fighters, not just Tatsu or Tyra, you never really know. You never really know. 
I am confident he will win, but I would not be shocked at all if Shirez ends up pulling this out. Me too. I do have Tyra by submission, but as you mentioned, I think a Tatsuro, uh, I'm sorry, an Edgar Chirez, Treshawn Gore, we're going to talk about later, parlay, throw a couple bucks on that. It's not going to hit, but it might. Yeah. And if it does... You're not going to throw made, your f- fucking fortune on no, it. No, no, yeah. just a couple bucks, and then shit, you might make a shitload of money. Yeah. A- anyways, off of people that, you know, you don't really, really know about. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it for that. So, moving on to the next fight of the night, it's Jimmy Crute versus Alonzo Manyfield. The rematch. And, my brother, I got to tell you, when I when I first saw this, yeah. as I was watching film, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I reviewed this fight. Mm-hmm. I forgot that they fought. Mm-hmm. And then I felt embarrassed because after rewatching the first fight, it was a damn good fight. It was yeah. a fun fight, yeah. dude. Holy shit, that was a fun fight. Part of it was because neither of them are that good. Right. Right? Yeah, they're both kind of like... You get what I'm saying? They are like, they are. Like, if, if either of them were like a little bit smarter, a little bit better as fighters, like the fight wouldn't have been as fun. Mm-hmm. Right? There were many times where I saw Jimmy Crew having the opportunity to get the finish. Yeah. And then he just didn't. And then there are many times where I'm like, holy shit, Jimmy Crude's chin sucks. Yeah. Manyfield wrecked him. But Manyfield's got power. Dropped him. Yeah. So, I just pulled up my predictions for the first time they fought. I had Jimmy Crute TKO round two. Okay. I would never pick that again now. Yeah. If I see Jimmy Crute winning, it would be by sub at this point. I, I really do believe that if he was a little bit smarter of a fighter, that he could have gotten the sub a few times in yeah. that fight. But also, he did get dropped. So, initially... What are the odds on this one? I think they're a coin flip, I believe. Let me know. Please, I need to know. Because that was a crazy pace fight. They're More than anything... Minus 115, minus Winner, loser. Last time out, I did not expect these guys to have such a fun fight. What is it? Minus 115, minus 105. It's a pick em. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is one of... Like, there are, I feel like there are distinctly a lot of fights in this card where, like, there's a decently clear winner. And then yeah. there are, like, three or four where it's like, man, it's really, really it's close, close. Really yeah. close. Initially, I wanted to say Manyfield second round TKO. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna stick with it. Manyfield second round TKO. Okay. So. I feel like that he ends. He does end up clipping him like he did. But listen, don't. This is not one of my guys, and that's not the disclaimer that I put out in the yeah. beginning of this video. But this is so damn close, man. Look at the first fight. It's so close. Either one of them could have gotten the finish at some point. And that's the biggest point with that fight is. Menefield could have got the finish multiple times. Yeah. Crute could have got the finish multiple times. Yeah. It, you know, who knows, bro? They just fought. I'm relying... Uh, nobody needed this match, this rematch. Right. But then it was a really good fight, so right. why not? I- I'm relying on something here. Alonzo Menefield would have won that fight if the point had not been taken away. So once it did play out, it was like Menefield was supposed to be the winner. Also, Crute has been on record multiple times saying that he was... Very surprised by the power that Alonzo Menafield has. How are you surprised by the power of somebody that looks that like looks that? looks like that. I don't get that. So I am. I think he's going to be hesitant, Jimmy Crute, a little worried about the power. We've also talked about this is not the same Jimmy Crute as before. And Menafield, by the way, is one of the least skilled fighters, I think, in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, he throws wild. He he's throws just, he's wide. He's just jacked as shit. It works sometimes. You and know what and I mean? of course it works. He's an athlete. Right. They're not a, man, they're not a ton of athletes. Natural athletes. No, I agree. So... And, anyways, I am picking Metafield. I think I'm going to go with Knockout. I think a hesitant Jimmy Crute will get clipped. I want wow. to throw one more thing yeah. in on this. This is the first time this has happened, and it might be the only time this ever happens in the duration of our show. What? This fight is a former what-do-they-drink fight, and we're re-reviewing <laughs> it. So that's why. How did you know that? Because I recall it. Wow. Yeah. And I don't think we're ever going to have a rematch. And if we... Do, I mean, we're going to have some rematches here and there. Yeah. Well, you know what? But on, what that note, on that note, yeah. what do they drink? I think, it's a Dino Bam Bam. <laughs> what do they drink? I think, if I recall correctly... If I recall correctly... If I recall correctly, you said Alonzo Menafield was a cognac drinker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think you said Jimmy Crute was like a Foster guy Jimmy or some Crute? shit like that. Like a beer guy. Uh, that sounds wrong. I think it sounds right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so what do you it. think? Yeah, I could stick with it. that. Okay, yeah, you like it. it. Okay. And I'm going to stick with Alonzo Menafield. Cool. But yeah. Moving on to the next fight of the night, it's Yasmin Haregui. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how the they Mexican? say it. The Mexican? No, I know that's how they say yeah. it. Versus Denise Gomes, the Brazilian. Yeah. 
And I guess I'll go first on this one. Sure. I remember, I distinctly remember, I, was, I wasn't I was watching film for a Yasmin Haragui fight. I was watching film for, let me see who she has fought recently. Yes, was it Lucindo? Mm, let or am me I see. completely out of bounds here? Uh, man. Actually, now I don't remember. I forgot who it was, but it was somebody else that fought this year. Maybe it was Lucindo. Okay. I don't want to get like I don't want to do all that right now. But I remember like whoever I was watching film for, I, I she popped off the screen. Yeah. I was like, man, she looks really good, you know. And Denise Gomes fought literally like two months ago mm-hmm. versus Bruna Brazil. Yes. Who, which we reviewed that fight on this card. I was very very confident. That Bruna Brazil was gonna win that. I think I literally had written down that she's she's like it's a different level of fighter. Yes, she won that very convincingly. I think watching that and watching the tape back recently, I realized that it's less about how good Denise Gomes is. It's more about how bad Bruna Brazil truly is. Can't fight off the back foot. You put pressure on her, she folds. For me, I have to go with Yasmin Haragui. I have to trust my gut and my heart for what I watched. Her initially, she popped off the screen. I'm going to go with Hargree by a 29-28 decision on this one. Yeah, I actually have the same thing written down. Yasmin by 29-28 decision. Uh, the only thing for me, is I'm not very confident in it. At I'm all. not super confident either. i, I got to tell you that. it. Maybe I didn't give Denise Gomes yeah. enough credit. She's decent. Yeah. She's much better than I thought. She is. She's solid, man. And this is another pattern on this card for me, which is like crazy odds. It's a minus four twenty for you. Oh wow! I, again, I just disclaimer. He has seen a good amount of the odds. I've yeah. seen none of them before and, this. And then a plus three twenty for Denise Gomes. Like I, I don't like that. It's women's MMA. It's hard to have odds that big on, you know, two fighters that. Yes, Yasmin looks better, but not by that much. So Yeah. And you know what? This is maybe fucked up. When I realized she's a mother, mm-hmm. it took a little bit away. And I don't I don't mean that in like but it just like I feel like you give a part of yourself, yeah. you know? So in any case, moving on, and this is a fight that was just made. Do you want me to take this one, JDM? I'll take it. Okay. No. This is a fight that was just made. Jack Dylan Madalena. Is he a year boy? No. His, I like no- him. his nose is so fucked up. Yeah, I like him. I think he's a great fighter. Oh, man. I'd love to fight him. No, <laughs> I, but- I just I said it in my head. I, I told myself I'm not going to say it out loud this time. But versus newcomer Josiah Harrell, 7-0, and the American making his UFC debut. The muscle hamster. I hate that. Yeah. What do you think about this one? Uh, again, I'm going to preface this with the odds. Let's start there. Minus that, do they have them out for this already? Fifteen. Good lord. Minus eleven fifteen for JDM. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Dina Bam Bam. Yes. You as a as a guy. Yeah. As an avid sports better. Sure. Because I teeter on this, so yeah. I'm curious what, when the odds are like this much. Mm-hmm. Do you add them to your parlay? Never. You don't. No. Because See, because I'm a piece of shit, and I'll still be like, ah, he's gonna do it. Right. But you shouldn't. You shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Right? You never do, because, like, even if you're on, like, a... I mean, if you're putting, like, 10 bucks on, like, a Hail Mary parlay of, like, you know, 10, 15 leg parlay, this guy's adding, like, $12 to your... You know what I it's mean? It's a like, little more than I know, that. but you get what I'm but saying. Yes. Like, it's not... If you're going to win 2300 what the fuck's the difference if you win 27 Right. It's less than that, usually. It's, like, 2390 uh, uh, like, 2400 yeah. Whatever. It just kind of depends, but like, yeah, I'll usually stay away from it. And to be honest, what I'll normally do is I'll just straight bet the other guy. Yeah, I'll just straight money line bet the other dude. I don't know if you recall, I had I think maybe maybe not the whole card correct, but I had a fat parlay on the Nunez. Yeah, I do remember that on the Nunez um, Pain, uh, Nunez Pena the first fight. Yes, yes. And I remember messaging you, and I was slapped, and you're like, "Dude, you have to like hedge hard." Yeah. And I was like, "Bro, like this bitch is not a little," and then. What happened? Yeah. So, yeah. anyway. Anyways, I'm not going to waste anyone's time here. The pick here is Jack Della Maddalena. Uh Josiah Harrell, he's he's the dude, if you guys have seen him on social media with the takedown outside, you know, where he took the dude down out of the cage. He's 7-0. and all of, his fin- all of his seven wins have come by finish, but he's not all that. He's not very technical. He's not special in any way for me. He has a tendency to get brawly. And if you leave your chin open and get brawly, Jack Della Maddalena is not the guy you want to see in the octagon. 
JDM is an actual real future contender in this division. I think he's a huge prospect. His nose is so fucked up. His bro. nose is sideways and Good Lord. Yeah, it's wild. But that like if you see that dude like in a bar. You know he fights. Like yeah. or he like takes that, baseball. Okay, bats how about to this? Would nose. you be more shook off like some dude bumping into you with hella cauliflower ear or with a f- nose that looks like that? I would say the cauliflower ear just because it takes repetition. Yeah, th- right? this could be like a one-time freak injury. Yeah, you could, exactly. You could have gotten fucked. Yeah. You, you, you could have gotten. A door to you the didn't face. get a punch off. You got dropped off. It, exactly. It couldn't even. It could not be a fight. True. That's you right. Know what I mean? Car accident or something. Right. Some yeah. shit fell on your yeah, head. I agree. I agree. But anyways, uh, JDM is going to beat Josiah Harrell. I'm going JDM KO round one, and that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I agree with you. I'm. I'm going JDM KO round one too. Originally, he was obviously supposed to be fighting. Well, maybe not obvious. Some people Sean watching this Brady. Was supposed to be fighting Sean Brady. I had a whole thing written up about that. I had him beating Sean Brady too. Mm-hmm. Who is, I mean, say what you will about his last performance and whatever yeah. you feel about Bilal. I had Jack Dill Madalena winning by like a late second round KO. Same. Because the really yeah. Same. Oh, interesting. Because the wrestling, I could see you know Sean Brady maybe doing something with that. But Jack Dill Madalena, he's got that something. Yeah. So I agree with you, man. First round knockout. Uh, the guy that he's fighting, 7-0, and obviously much less experience. He's jacked. He's missed weight by like 7 pounds. Yeah. Uh, he once, I think 55. he weighed 162. He weighed yeah. for 155. So it's like, I just don't see it happening, man. The last dude that he fought was 9-8-1. Before that, 5-0, and 6-5, 3-0. Nothing. This good, is man. a huge step up. This is one of those situations he's like doing the UFC a, fav- a favor. I'm sure this won't be his only fight in the UFC because of this. Yeah, but yeah, JDM, fight. man, J- like you said, he's a legit contender, first-round knockout. Moving on to the next fight of the card, it's Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price. Let's get it. And this is one of the guys. So this is, like I put the disclaimer about, you know, I have a lot of my favorite fighters on this card. Mm-hmm. Robbie Lawler is one of my favorite fighters. So listen, He's a true legend of the sport. One of my personal favorite fighters of all time. Is the record great at 29-16? No, it's not. He's 41 years old. He fought most of his career at welterweight. He's not 185 at middleweight. It's probably time to hang it up. It's probably been time to hang it up, right? But then you rewatch his last fights. If it's time for him to hang it up, Nick Diaz had nothing for him. I mean, he was landing some shots in the first couple rounds, but as the fight went on, he had absolutely nothing for him, you know? And I, I had money on Robbie Lawler that night, too. Last time out, he fought Barbarina, I believe. Brian Barbarina. And he got TKO'd, you know? Mm-hmm. But pff, before he got clipped, man, he was winning that fight. He was dropping Barbarina, and Barbarina's not a bad fighter. For me, it's in the middleweight division. It's a shitty division. We've talked about this many times. I don't have to beat a dead horse into the ground. He always he, he has a perfect jab. His jab is a work of art. Are they fighting Hit, at middleweight? Yeah, dude. I thought it was one seventy. Is it? I'm pretty sure. I think I think you're tripping. No, you're right. It says one seventy. You're right. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter though. Yeah. Well, was his last fight at one eighty five? I thought it was. Who Robbie N- versus Nick? Or not last? Nick Diaz was at one eighty five. Because Nick Diaz was like missing weight. That's right. That's right. Like, okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Regardless though, that does change it a little bit. That might be an advantage for Robbie Lawler. I like his boxing, and I again I can't go against my boy Nico Price. Very hittable. I don't think his boxing skill is anywhere near Robbie Lawler's. I don't think it'll ever be. I am shocked. Like, who, what, what are the odds on this one? Minus two sixty for Nico Price, and plus two ten the other way. Yeah, that's probably about right. Listen. I don't see this fight going to the ground. I just think Robbie Lawler's boxing is better. Yes, he should have retired. Yes, it's time to go. His no- Talk about noses. His isn't deformed, but that bitch is flat as hell. If you look at his side profile, him and the Red King, like, listen, yeah. greatest fights of all time. Yep. Greatest fight of all time, Love I would say. Yeah. I mean, I have to go with Robbie Lawler here. I really do believe it, though. For There are other fights that we'll get to that maybe I don't believe it as hard in my heart. No. This one I actually do believe with Robbie Lawler. As that big of an underdog, I'm going with Robbie Lawler. So the fight with Rory, just, you know, I love that you mentioned that because that's one of those fights when people don't like MMA. or they Oh, that's the fight you MMA. show them. That's one of the ones I show them. Um, here's the thing, man. I'm going with Nico Price. We're going to disagree here, I think, for the first time on this It card. is. It is the first time. Um. I just don't and, think, and the next one too, by the way. Sorry. I just don't think Robbie Lawler 
as the aggression. That I get he it. Used He's forty one. Right. Any time he could be done. Right. I I hate to see legends towards the end of their career kind of have that fall off, and he doesn't have that same dog in him, and that's what Robbie Lawler was known for. He was the dog. You mentioned Dude. the Rory McDonald fight. There's no more dog than that guy in that fight. Holy my God. That's the definition of he's got that dog in him, like the meme. You know what I'm saying? You got to have the x-ray with Robbie Lawler in there. Dude. So here, here's the way I see it. I was shocked when he first like made a comeback. Yeah. I mean. And I was like, oh, my God. And then, I was, and then when I, I was like, ah. Former champion. Should, he's he, should he be doing this? You know, like. But how many former champions are on this card, by the way? My goodness, Couple. but please, go I ahead. just think with these two, Dino, it's going to be a dogfight, right? Like, you know who Nico Price is. You know who Robbie Lawler is. It's going to become a scrappy dogfight. And in the year of 2023, I just feel the like... The year I of the can, Lord. The year of the Lord, 2023. I think we can trust Nico Price a little more. You mentioned the Robbie Lawler win against Nick Diaz. I just want to point out, and I love Robbie Lawler, so this is no shot against him. That's his only fight since 2017. That he's won. I, that's why I said I was shocked that he made a comeback. Right. Well, but then after that, that he looked streak. decent versus Barbarina. So right. That, you know. In that losing streak, it was RDA. It was an undefeated Ben Askren. It was Colby Covington on the rise. It was the perennial top 10. Man, if Magny. you keep going down, the people watching this video, if they're younger, they may not know the names, but they they were Hendricks always the, the top of the division. Exactly. So Robbie Lawler's fought the who's who, but I'm, I'm trusting Nico Price. I hate to see it. I hope Robbie Lawler wins and I'm wrong here. And if he does retire, which I think he will win or loss. Uh, that's what I have written down too. For, thank you for everything you've done for this. sport. Literally. Hats off. Take your hat off. No, no. I haven't shaved. It's not. Oh, true. Okay, fair. Thank you, Robbie Lawler. Regardless, moving on to the next fight of the night. It is Bo Nickel versus Treshawn Gore. Dino Bam Bam at 185. What do you think about this one? All right, so this is the main card opener. This is the pay-per-view opener. I'll have you guys know that when the pay-per-view starts, this is generally where my indulging in adult beverages starts to <laughs> generally happen. And I'll have you guys know that I would have started two hours prior. Yeah, because he's just built different. No, we're, that's just the difference in us as people. Yeah. Last time we were in Vegas, actually, now that we're going again, yeah. I remember you specifically telling me, I'm not starting to drink until the main card. And I was like... Pfft. Right. And when Sean, I never once considered that. As I a started. I literally yeah. started drinking as Sean O'Malley was walking out yeah. to open the main card. But what's funny is that we end up somehow. We meet. We end up meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We're degenerates. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, the drinks start flowing here. Anyways, Bo Nickel versus Treshawn Gore. I want to start again by pointing out the odds. Minus fourteen hundred. Didn't you just tell me eleven fifty or twelve fifty or some shit? Minus fourteen hundred. Dude, that's worse than is, Jamie Pickett. Let's see this. Minus twelve fifty on. What were the here. odds versus him? Check the uh, the closing odds. How can you do that? Check, click Bo Nickel. Yeah. And then click uh, click like where it says. So click where it says win arm triangle whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and then check the odds there. So minus. Okay, 2, okay, that was massive. Jesus Christ, okay. dude, he's so overhyped. Anyway, so I've seen minus fourteen hundred. We just saw minus twelve fifty. On the Treshawn Gore side, I'm seeing plus 700, plus 800. That's so crazy. You know, I get the hype behind Bo Nickel. Yeah. I'm not stupid. He is a very, very Wrestling good is like a highly talented, especially your first discipline. Wrestling is always preferred. Yeah. And he's, he's not just he's a literally, wrestler. Not just a, he's the, t the tippy top of the top. He's the cream right. of the crop. I get that. But come on, dude. That's what I'm saying. Was the win versus Jamie Pickett that impressive? Right. I get the odds kind of shifted down, but like... But Trishon Gore is better than Jamie Pickett, so... So, anyways, I get the hype. He's a very good prospect. The wrestling, as you mentioned, next level. It's top tier. Not many can match it at all anywhere across the MMA world. We have not seen Bo Nickel tested yet, Never. which is why I don't like those they, And that was calculated. Right. Yeah. And many think that we will not see him tested here as well, and I understand that. He has been a freight train in his MMA career. The four fights were all similar. We had the first one, which was on the Masvidal uh, in Masvidal's league, Game Bread, I believe. He knocked the dude out really quickly. Yeah. Then his next three fights, the two were on the contender. Those were quick finishes. Then we saw the Jamie Pickett fight in his UFC debut, a quick finish after the groin shot. Some people are saying groin shot. Some are saying no. But they've all been quick finishes. Yeah. That's my point. But he um, did have some issues. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that he did. I mean, with Jamie Pickett, as it, quickly it seemed like as it was a, like a tough takedown yeah. to, until the nut shot. Anyways, then we have Treshawn Gore. He's a certified my boy. He's an up and down kind of fighter. He looked like a killer on tough. Then he got injured, so he couldn't find the finale. Made the UFC, lost to battle. That has aged pretty well. Then he lost to Cody Brundage. That has not aged very well at yeah, all. Yeah, I have that written down too, man. I think that's like the biggest thing going against Treshawn right now is yeah. that Brundage loss because Brundage put up a William Knight like performance. Yeah. yeah, this last time out versus uh, Dumas, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, anyways, then he got the sub against Josh Fremd, which was like, it's wild that that it was wasn't... was a guillotine, right? Yeah, it was yeah. like a weird guillotine. It, it's wild that that wasn't nominated for sub of the year. But He's, anyways... He could, that showed his strength. Right. He is powerful. And, and I know I know that Bo Nickel, we've seen him put hands on people. Yeah. Treshawn's got to have more power. Like, I, I feel probably like... Pure probably pure power. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think the negative on Treshawn Gore... Besides losing to Brundage, who you know ha- hasn't looked that good, is the fact that he's learning on the job. He's four and two in the he's four and to- two in his MMA career, but Nichols four and zero. Oh. Yeah, the experience edge is not in Nichols' favor here. It is in wrestling. It is in the wrestling background in the Penn State. D1 Trishon National Gore is such a good wrestler, right? But when you're just going to get somebody, in my opinion, that's yeah. just that much better than you. That in that in your best area. Right. So that for me, but please, I don't so, mean to take no, away. No, so I get where you're coming from. I'm just saying there isn't that big of an experience gap. So again, with the odds, I don't like them. I know that well, the Bo, odds are insane. Right. I know that Bo Nickel should win this fight and probably do so easily. But fuck that. I'm going with Treshawn wow. Gore by knockout, and I'm going to tell you why. I, lo- I would love to see that because you know middleweight, as we talk about a lot on this show. Oh my god, it's a fraud ass division, and I hope Bo Nickel becomes. Everything the UFC wants him to be. I like the guy. I think he is the real deal. But we have not seen this dude tested past two and a half minutes in a MMA fight. Trishon Gore is not going to lay down. And then the other thing on top of that is the fact that he hasn't really fought anyone. That's all that. Yeah, he oh, fought no, 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 two no-name close, yeah. guys and then two guys with a little bit of a name. I guess my only thing is... For his career moving forward, at such a shitty division, if he can get easily past Trish, and I'm, I don't define easily, right? Well, I'm yeah. not saying I'm not saying anything like that. I'm not predicting anything right now in this moment. I'm just saying if he does, 185 grapplers are so fucking bad that you would think his wrestling he would can he can make a quick rise. And I don't like him as a person necessarily, but I'm just saying. So I'm gonna end it by saying this: if this fight goes past three minutes which I truly believe Treshawn Gore has the ability to last three minutes with Bo Nickel, then we're entering uncharted territory. You're right. We literally don't know. We just saw Abus Magomedov, who everyone thought was going to kill Sean Strickland and knock him out immediately. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people thought yeah, that they did. he could, and he almost did. But then after four minutes... Now he's a meme because he had no cardio. You literally text me that. Right. We don't know Bo Nickel's cardio. We don't know how he faces adversity in the octagon. He did it well in Penn State in the wrestling room. But anyways, uh, the odds are terrible, and I'm going to take a flyer on my boy Treshawn Gore by knockout. If Bo Nickel wins, Bo Nickel wins, and let's see what happens from there. Yeah, man. You, you've you broken it down pretty much perfectly. I, I've thrown in my piece already. I just think the wrestling discrepancy is going to be too large. And I want to see Treshawn Gore win, and I hope I'm wrong. And I am not. I don't think I'm going out on a limb here, given the goddamn odds, which are so stupid. The right. odds are so stupid to me. I have to go with Bo Nickel. I do think he's going to get a late first-round sub. I just think the the like, it's like, it's like, like, who's a decent shooting guard right now? Me? Like, oh, 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 not even. You know Michael Red? Yeah, of Michael Red was a very good shooting guard. Right. Okay, but then it's like Michael Jordan was so right. much better. Right. So, it's like, yes, that he was a great shooter, he, like, all that, but Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. So, mm-hmm. And I'm not saying Bo Nichols is going to be Michael Jordan yeah, of, of, wild. of MMA or UFC yeah. or anything like that, but when we're, when we're talking about this is your best attribute and this is his best attribute and he is so much better than you or at least so much more qualified on paper, I have to go with Bo Nickel. I would argue that Treshawn Gore's best attribute is his power. 
I think he. I hope that he yeah. uses that, and I hope that he uses his jab too, man. I think. I think if I'm Treshawn Gore, and I hope that he does this because I want to see him win. I hope that he goes in hard. Yeah. I want to see him come out swinging because I think that's his best chance. Because do you know what happens to Bo Nickel? Four if he gets, into we've the never fight. seen him caught. You're right. What happens if Treshawn Gore catches him on the chin in the first thirty seconds? What happens if he fails the first two takedowns and catches some elbows? And on I the do way think that I, I do like think that, that Treshawn will defend the first two takedowns. How about that? It's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. And if Treshawn Gore wins, I'm going to be happy and I'm going to make a ton of money off it. So let's get it. Let's get it. Moving on to the next fight of the card, it's Jalen Turner versus oh Dan Hooker. Listen, this one's pretty straightforward for me. These guys are not terribly different. Dan Hooker, man, I used to I used to love Dan Hooker. I still do. I respect him for what he's been for the sport. Dustin Poirier took his soul. Exactly. Unfortunately. Exactly. And is Dan still a very capable striker? Absolutely. He showed that in his last fight versus um who was That was uh, Claudio Pajeles. Thank you. Yeah. And is Pajeles like somebody that's and he's trash. Special? No, not necessarily. But I, I was happy to see Dan Hooker win that convincingly. Same. Jalen Turner is an absolute my boy. So on this card, Jalen Turner, Robert Whitaker, um, we've got uh, Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno. We've got um, we just covered him. Um, Drink is duplicity. Like no, these are all, no, no, God, no. Um, no, who was it? Uh, we, we just discussed with Rob, the Robbie Ra- Lawler. Yeah, Robbie Lawler. Like, for me, the, again, I prefaced it with I'm probably going to be biased here. I don't think this is the bias speaking here, though. Dan Hooker hasn't fought many strikers as skilled as Jalen Turner that have the the same reach as him. Right. Right. Jalen Turner, I just think, is better in all facets. Right. I see him getting a second round sub here. I see him get dropping Dan Hooker. We've seen his chin be tested many a times lately. He's been knocked out a bunch. I like Dan Hooker. I always did. I just think that the ground advantage, and I'm not saying Dan Hooker's bad on the ground. Jalen Turner's just better on the ground. So, yeah. And he's got the same amount of KO power. He's taller. Same same reach for me. And especially, honestly, I know he lost the Gamrot fight the last time out. It was damn close, man. Yeah. So for me... I have to go with Jalen Turner. This one's very straightforward for me. I'm going to go second round sub. Yeah. I have second round TKO. TKO, I figured. Yeah. I, I thought about TKO. I, I have it to ground and pound. And again, he, he, I just see him getting caught and then. Right. Jalen Turner has some wins by sub, man. Like yeah, a decent exactly. amount. Yeah. He had the sub against, uh, was it Riddle? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, J- Jalen Turner, man, he, he's, he's younger. Dan Hooker, as you said, the Dustin Poirier fight kind of. Or Brad Riddell, Riddle, Jesus. Um, but yeah, I think his I was soul thinking Matt was Riddle. In my Matt mind. Riddle, shout out Matt Riddle. But uh, <laughs> he was a UFC, UFC fighter too. He yeah. was exactly. Um, yeah, Dan Hooker. Ever since that Dustin Poirier fight, he has not been the same. The Dustin Poirier fight is one for the ages. It was the fight of like the little I, beginning my, pandemic. And Connor era. was right. That's the that's the post fight that you watch. Yeah, where you're like Connor was right. Poirier is a fake ass nice guy. Yeah. Because he did like one of these with like fucking Hooker, where he like put his like forehead in his forehead, and he's like, he's like, ah, you you're gonna fuck me up, like whatever, like, and it's like, don't get me started, bro. You just that. beat his ass, right. like, just I hate people that are shitty winners, dude. Yeah, um, I like Dan Hooker. It was very nice to see him beat the shit out of Claudio Pajela. It was, it really was. I think it's done, man. I don't think he's this level anymore. Do you think they cut him? There's no way they cut him. No, they don't. Dan cut Hooker's Dan one of those guys. No, they don't cut Dan Hooker. Yeah, you don't cut you don't cut a Dan Hooker. No. Worst case, he's like a good placeholder. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anything else? No. Moving on to the next fight of the night, and this is this is where we really get into it. This is the fight, Robert Whitaker, and I might have said this on the on the sh- on the show before. Is my favorite fighter. I was fucking spilling stuff. Oh, were you? A little bit. <laughs> well, that's fine. Bobby Knuckles. This is my goddamn guy, man. I love me some Bobby Knuckles. Are we taking right? the glasses off? I'm just doing this for dramatic effect. Oh, okay, so if you if you need to. You want me to be dramatic? Yeah, if you want to. Well, please, you're a grown man. Do your thing. How's it, is this? Bobby Knuckles is my guy. I can't handle... I'm going to be there. Don't forget. I can't handle watching him lose. Yeah. What's more important right now? Are you checking oh, your phone? Oh, no, because... No, stop. Oh, okay. We're talking about Drickus. I don't. Like I'm trying this. to get emotional here. You're doing Go some ahead. other shit. 
Yeah. Drickers Duplessis. Listen, he's the anti Bobby Knuckles to me, right? Bobby he's Knuckles. The Antichrist. I hate the guy. Bobby Knuckles is the most calm, cool, collected guy there is, right? If he was like a cocky son of a bitch, somebody with his resume absolutely could be that. If he was like a cocky son of a bitch who was like, fuck Drickus, like this guy's not on shit, like I'm gonna be, I, maybe I would feel differently. God damn it, skill wise. And listen, I'm. I'm the type of guy that will argue that Bobby Knuckles won the last Adesanya fight. I'm sorry. 3-2, he did win that fight. Let, hate on me in the comments if you feel a certain right there. if you feel a certain way, let me know. And I'm sure you, a lot of you people do. But I love the guy. I think he is skill for skill. I think he's one of the most skill. He's it's him and Adesanya, right? Drickus Duplessis is not nearly as skilled as him. But what he is is a He's a beast. And he's not like your typical power puncher who just goes for it. Like, he'll get clipped. He'll get tired. But then he still has more for you. And that does make me nervous. It makes me very nervous, actually, as a, as a true Bobby Knuckles fan. But I can't go against Bobby Knuckles. I'm going with a 30-27 decision. And if, there's, if the UFC gods are real, if the fight gods are real, this is something that has to happen. You're right. I... I can't, I can't, if I see Bobby Knuckles get not, the only possible win for Drake is, is like a first or like early right. second round knockout. Agreed. If that happens, I'm walking out of the arena. Okay. And then I'm going to come back because I'll be like, I can't, right. like I paid good money for this, but that's But it's like up. a good smoke break or something. Yeah. I'm going to be upset about that. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see what you have to say about it. I am nervous about it. I can't, all my guys I'm nervous about in this, right. in this card. As you should be. But come on. Come on. He's so much better everywhere. And, like, Drickus is like, oh, he's going to come. And Bobby Knuckles is like, bro, he's fought Romero to five-round fights twice. Right. Adesanya. Adesanya twice. Yeah. Like, look at it. Look at the resume, man. It means something. I think his personality is going to work towards his advantage. Bobby Knuckles got this. 30-27. Okay. Um, I just want to preface this by saying this fight has – it's – one of the best guys in the UFC, and Robert Whitaker. Absolutely. It's one of the best, as you said, skills. Just pound for pound, one of the best fighters on the planet. And he is fighting maybe the luckiest guy on the planet. Dude. And his skills, Dino, ja uh, I was going to say Jack Del Maddalena. Drickus Duplessis' skills are bad. They are not top notch in any way. But he gets it done. I get that it's middleweight. And shit, if you can make 186 pounds, you've got a shot in the UFC middleweight division. Yeah. But yes, this dude... He's, couldn't, couldn't be us. He's, not, no, right. he, not the 186 <laughs> part, no. And luck. Luck has just never gone. Oh my way. God, same. Yeah. yeah. But so anyways, please, like, give us a chance, goddammit. So I'm just saying, look. Like and subscribe. Robert Whitaker should absolutely win this fight. He is so much better than Drake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking fist fight somebody. I'm telling you right now, Dino. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing hands. If somebody around me within, like, I would say, like, a 14-foot radius. Yeah, is going crazy. Like, if, okay, first round. Oh, knockout. John, like, mm. he gets, like, oh, Robert Whitaker knocked out. Yeah. And somebody around me is, like, acting. Celebrating. I'm throwing hands, bro. But I'm serious. So, okay, let's do this. Yeah. I think Robert Whitaker is going to win 30-27. I would not be shocked if Drickus Duplessis wins. Me neither. Like, you can't be anymore. Me neither, yeah. You can't be anymore because he is. But, bro, like, Romero couldn't do it. Right. But apparently I know, but this I, guy's I, the yeah, best. he's so, the best, yeah. And I, he's African. Right. I did want to ask you this before. What do they drink? I, I feel like we've kind of gone past that. At Robert Rudiger, Foster's. Foster's. It's Australian for beer. That, that's what they say. Yep. Shout out Foster's. Drinkers Duplessis. Hopefully, like poison, right? On God. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. But I'm good, man. Hope I'm I'm praying and hoping and my mind says and my heart says Robert Whitaker by ass whoop. But I got a little was a little worry. Yeah. No. And on that note, the next two the top three fight I'm very got Jalen Turns another one of my guys. Yeah. By the way. I'm but, not too worried in that one. I'm not too worried yeah. either. That's like I guess why I didn't voice it so much. Yeah. But my compa, Brandon Moreno, is in the co main event. And listen, I know that he's fight, fighting a guy that has beaten him twice already. Mm -hmm. Alexandre Pantoja 
has looked really goddamn good. Brandon Royval is really good. And he finished them like it was nothing. Yeah. Listen, their last fight was more than five years ago. Brandon Moreno is a different fighter now. He is absolutely a different fighter. His physique is different. He was like skinny fat when he first started. He's put on a little bit of muscle. He's no Figueredo. Shout out Figgy, bro. That's my boy. I know that's your boy. But Figgy has the most power in the division. Pantoa, I just, I'm very, I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah. I can't, I don't want, listen, if we go into a run of Whitaker loses, Moreno loses, I'm absolutely throwing flying elbows from wherever I'm at, bro. To whoever. 100 section, I'm throwing flying elbow yeah. from the 200 section. Yeah. You're so, yep. listen, I don't see Pantoa flying through him, right? I am very scared. If Brandon Moreno wasn't my guy, <laughs> I hate to say this even, like, say he wasn't my guy. Yeah. I would say Pantoja by second round rear naked choke, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to say that. Okay. I can't, I don't have it in me to say that. Fair. So what are you saying? Because I would be very upset if that happened. Right. So what I'm saying is Brandon Moreno, is it a five round or it's a three round? It's, it's a title fight. Oh, it's a title fight, of course. Where are you, where are you at? Where no, I, I have that written down. You're, you're like emotional, you're trying I'm emotional, right bro, but I'm going to say Brandon Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say four rounds to one, three rounds to two. Okay. Yeah. Like a 48, 47. First of all, if this does go to the later rounds, yeah. Brandon Moreno wins the last three rounds, no question. Yeah. What I'm nervous about is the first two rounds. Okay. Because Alexander Pento is a goddamn finisher. He is super strong. He's got good strikes. He's got nice kicks. He's got lethal submissions, too. He's one of the, he's one of the most skilled and one of the most well-rounded fighters in the world, bro. So, that being said, if I was... An unbiased man, I would say Pantoja by second round RNC. I'm not going to say that. Okay. So I'm saying Brandon Moreno. 48-47. 48-47. All right. So let me start off with a quote. You ready? I'd rather you not. Well, I'm going to. Okay. The definition of insanity oh. is doing the same thing oh. over and over again. Look at Adesanya. And expecting Look at Adesanya, level. though. Right. And I told you that was an outlier. I know it proves the, it proves the pick, rule to my trilogy pick. Yeah, Albert, Albert Einstein said that by the way. Oh my God, he's smarter off. than me. He's oh, smarter than you. As smart so as you like to pretend Lord, to be. Good Lord, I would hope so. He's pr- smarter than most of you guys, especially if you're not subscribed. He's definitely smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Hey, we've seen the fight twice, right? Do you know yeah. Pantoja won? Everyone's mm-hmm. saying Brandon Moreno got better, and he did. He, oh he my God, he did. did. He absolutely did. And what was Pantoja doing there, sitting there with his dick in his hand? Wish that was me, brother. <laughs> Pantoja got better as well. He got um, the hair too. My God, he's got the hair. And I know this pains you. I no, I knew you're. I knew. But what I'm trying to say is, I knew you're going there. I'm just not sold on Brandon Moreno, man. You're a goddamn. And maybe it is the figgy bias, right? Yeah. It, oh my it God. Could be that. Oh, oh, you love the guy that were like uh, immediately next to him. Sick. This is a very unbiased prediction, I'm sure. But hear me out. Yeah. I think Brandon Moreno, obviously he's good, right? He's no, a I literally champion. just said what I said, so yeah. Okay. But I think as far as the men champions are concerned, I think he's the worst one. And if we go division by division, we start with John Jones. I don't think there's an argument that anyone can make. Fat and sloppy. Okay. Sure. Next. Jamal Hill. My, another my, year my, boy. My boy. His only loss in his career is a fluke. A fluke yep. broken arm. We have Israel Adesanya. I don't think Amazing. anyone can doubt that. Can't doubt it now. Leon Edwards is a question mark. That's the first one that's like maybe. Right. But I'll, I'll let you know he's beaten the GOAT, Kamaru Usman, the GOAT of that division. 20, 37 20, 20. years old, but okay. Sure. Islam Makhachev is better. <laughs> Alexander Volkanovsky is better. Yeah. Aljo's better. That's just my thought process. You're right. I think the UFC. I, agree with that. I think the UFC wants Brandon Moreno here. It's a big Mexican card. They're pushing Mexico. They don't need him now, though. I Brasso, just, Yair doing right. their, doing his thing. I just feel like the jujitsu of Pantoja is the difference maker here. 
I think a hesitant Brandon Moreno. Moreno's the better striker now, though. Yes, I think after he's also a slow starter. I think after losing twice, he's going to be even slower to start and more hesitant. That takedown. And also, maybe there's something to be said about having fought the same goddamn guy fifty times in a row with Figgy. He fought with well, Figgy fought him four times in a row. Yeah, he fought Figgy four four of the last five times. But he did look really good against Kai, though. But yeah. Who's another my boy? But anyway. Sure, but anyways, I, I just think that that takedown that you think will come at some point will come. I think he will give up his back, and RN, RNC round two sounds right and, uh, and new. So you basically agree with me. Yeah. I can't say that explicitly. And new. Moving on to the main event of the night, it's Alexander Volkanovsky versus Yair Rodriguez. Dino, since you have so much goddamn stuff to say, please... Let me know what you think about All this right, one. And as you're heartbroken, after Pantoja has just defeated Brandon Moreno, we'll take a little smoke break, me and you, and yeah. then we'll walk back in. No, I'm leaving. I'm I'm walking back to the Luxor Hotel okay. where we have a suite. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. But, yeah, no. that would be very upsetting. Yes. Yeah. So, anyways, let's start with the champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. I was never a huge fan of Alex Volkanovsky. Until that Islam fight, he, he just kind of, like... He, he got the MMA world, I think, to fall in love with him. He wasn't supposed to Me win Me too. That, right. He wasn't supposed to win that fight. It wasn't supposed to be close. And well, he, it started with the last Max fight, too, though. What what did? Oh, the, the liking the of Volk Alexander love. Volkanovsky. Yeah. Sure. Because the, la- the first two were decently close. And oh, then that the was la- an ass-whooping. And then the third fight was, my goodness. But, well, to me... It hadn't started there because I'm such a big Max Holloway fan. So am that I. It, it, it was like, I gave the dude his respect, but it's like, I hate this guy. Because that's like a my boy, and you just beat the shit out of him. Yeah, he So, did. like, I, I still had, like, this grudge. You were saying after the third fight? Yeah, I had a grudge. Yeah. I had a grudge against him. And then the, you know, and again, it is for those reasons. He beat Max three times. He beat the shit out of Ortega. He murdered the Korean zombie. Oh, my God, murdered. But then, but then in that Islam fight, there was like, that's where my respect came because I didn't expect him to do any of that. It's because it was against a Muslim guy. Well, no, but it was because I didn't expect him to do that at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was not supposed to be in that fight whatsoever. No, nobody expected him nobody to be. Nobody expected I didn't, him to be. I, I didn't expect him to be. I'll be honest with you. I didn't expect him to be. Right. And he was impressive as hell. And he, it was it was nothing short of inspirational. No, no, like, no question, man. No, jokes aside. Right. Like, that was unbelievable, man. That's what I'm saying. And I still think he won that fight. It's possible. Let's not get into that. Right. But. Anyways, the thing that scares me, he is short. He is a very short fighter. These are facts. And that's a huge problem yeah. versus a guy like Yair Rodriguez, yeah. who's long-bodied. And if anyone in the 145-pound division can be considered dangerous, and it's dangerous at all times, it's Yair Rodriguez, right? Yeah, I mean, look at look at his finishes. That's what I'm saying. Look at the elbow. Look at the The, the elbow the, against the zombie. It's the, the knees, the elbows, the kicks. Like, nobody has him like Yair. Unorthodox as hell. Obviously, on the feet, he can catch anyone at any time. Something crazy like that elbow against Zombie. Um, and then the jiu-jitsu department, man. He's long-bodied, and he is, like, sneakily good in the jiu-jitsu department. We've seen him held down and dominated before. Bro, if Max Holloway can hold you down, though. Sure. Max Holloway would... dominated him on the ground the last two rounds. Yeah, I, I know, but... so. There's, I mean, Max, Volk, Volk having just trained for Islam. I, I get where you're coming from. I'm just saying. Are you going your ear? No, but I'm okay. just saying. He's very, very dangerous. I think if Yair Rodriguez. It's the toughest matchup at featherweight for Volk today. Hear me out. If Yair right? wins this fight, probably. Yeah. If Yair wins this fight, it's in spectacular fashion. He is going to knock Alexander Volkanovsky out cold. With a knee or a head kick or, or, or a elbow liver, or like a liver yeah. shot where it shuts nah, him down. I don't even see a body shot. I uh, think it's going to be a head kick or an elbow. Right. It, it's it's something like that. If Volk wins, you're assuming probably decision. He kind of just outmans the skinny dude. I hate MMA math, but I want to do some here. As you said, Volk last time out dominated Max. Yair lost to him. And it was a tough ass fight though. Volk out wrestled Max. And, Max out and so did Holloway. Yeah, the uh, Holloway yeah. out wrestled Yair. Exactly. And then Volk dominated the Korean zombie. Dominated. But And yes, Yair knocked him out, but zombie was literally one second away yeah. from 
winning that fight. Yep. So the MMA math don't be mathing. Sometimes it do be mathing, though. I got to stick with the pound for pound king here. Uh, I think he finds his way to survive some early damage, some early dangerous, dangerous, shaky moments, and eventually proves why he is the best fighter on the planet. And I think that wrestling comes into play in like the second and third round. And then I'm going TKO late, like fifth round. Here's the way I see the fight playing out. Wow. I, I, I hope think, you're putting money on that because that's I'm sure the, the odds of that are nice. Odds. Yeah. The way I see the fight playing out is Volk comes out and wants to prove that he can play Yair Rodriguez's game. 100%. Yeah. 100% because that's who, and and that's why I love and respect That's who Volk. he is as a man and as a fighter. Just like with Islam, he's he was never going to get out-wrestled. Right. So and I, you, at first you're like, oh, that's hearsay. Mm-hmm. And then you see him fucking do it. And you're like, holy shit. And that's where my respect for him comes from. Yeah. Straight up. I get that. And as a man? Yeah. To do that? It's like, you know you're not that. And I'm then like, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be I am that. Yeah. That's so, unbelievable. You dude. know, I think round one, he comes out, he plays the striking game with Yair Rodriguez, plays the kick game with him. Volkanovski has very good leg kicks. I was going to say, he needs to use his leg kicks. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's going to try to do that. That that round can go either way. Maybe Yair edges it out. I think come halfway through the second round, maybe after the second round, we're going to see Alexander Volkanovski really start pressuring with the grappling. And once he realizes, and, and I don't need to tell him that, I think he's the smartest fighter in MMA. I think once he 100%. knows that he can handle this guy on the ground, it's a different ball game. I'm yeah, going Volk TKO round five to ground and pound. That's a the finish is a crazy like the type of finish yeah. is a crazy prediction. But I love it, and I hope that's the case. I will say of all the my boys on this card, I I'm think I'm most confident in Volk. Okay. Um, I just can't possibly go against him, man. After seeing what he did with Islam. And I still think he won that fight. And let's again, let's not get into it. But yeah, I think like you said, man, he's the type of guy who where he's gonna literally kick with, he's gonna kick with Yair yeah. for the first couple of rounds. Yeah. Having just trained for Islam, there's no way this guy out grapples him on the ground for me. And Volk is strong as hell. Very. He used to be a fat boy too. You can't forget that. If Ortega, who is the premier jujitsu specialist yeah. in the goddamn division. Couldn't finish him in what looked like a position that was like for twice, the taking twice. twice in that fight. Any other fighter in the division would have tapped. Yeah. If Ortega couldn't finish you by submission, and I know Yair is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Yair is not submitting Volk. So the only possible way to win is basically what you said. It's going to be by some crazy spinning shit, by a head kick, or by an elbow, or by a knee. I could see Volk getting dropped. I just think he has the heart to not get finished, man. And yeah. I can't possibly go against him. After I wasn't necessarily fully a believer, after watching the Islam fight, I'm beyond convinced. He's incredible. He is a once-in-a-generation fighter. And there's something to be said about going from being a fat dude to being, like, kind of fit to, like, being shredded and then constantly improving your game. I respect it. I love it. And I'm looking forward to it. Anything else to add on that? Yeah, so we're going for our third main event in a row. Yeah. So we're saying and still for the main event, both of us, correct? No question. All right, I want to ask this question, and I don't want to bring this juju out there. But if Alexander Volkanovsky does lose this fight, do you think he's deserving of an automatic rematch, or does that depend on the, the way the fight plays out? I guess it always does. Yeah. To some extent. But not really. So like if Yair I feel like I feel out. like he is so high up, he's shown so much mm-hmm. where yes, he does deserve an immediate rematch. Okay. For example, does Val did Valentina she yes. got finished pretty easily. Yeah. Does she Yeah Based on just if you're just a new fan watching that fight by how it finished, you'd probably say no. But knowing the history, yeah. it's like of course she does. Sure. So it's I guess there's some of that in play. There's no way that Volk, Volk deserves it. Yeah. After what he did moving up a weight class, mm-hmm. he deserves it for sure. And then I'd like And to... also, who else and like unless it's Holloway versus Rod, we just saw that. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Emmett and... Emmett's done now. Unless it's Tapuria Rodriguez. But it's then too you, yeah, it's a little too not. soon for Tapuria. So of course, I feel like there's no question they would give him the rematch. Okay, so it doesn't matter how it ends. Like it, it doesn't matter. Okay. If you're asking me like not necessarily what do I think should happen, yeah. what's gonna there's there's no I'm one hundred percent certain it would be an immediate rematch. Okay. And then let me let me 
pose one more random question to you. Yeah. Let's say Alexander Volkanovsky wins as we expect him to. Yeah. Let's say Aljamain Sterling beats Sean O'Malley. Yeah. That's Do the next matchup. Do you like Aljamain Sterling moving up to 145 and fighting Volk for double champ status or maybe one champ status if he lets that belt go to give him a rob the chance? Are you asking me for a prediction? I can't make a prediction. I'm not right. asking you to make a prediction. I'm just saying, do you do you think Aljo versus Volkanovski Aljo deserves that for sure. would be next? Or do you think yeah. what Ilya Tapuria has done would kind of jump Aljo? It do, I think it doesn't matter what I think. Yeah. I think what would happen is it would be Tapuria and then Aljo, given things right now. In that order. Because that's, that's what Volk wants. Okay. Because Volk is the type of guy, after seeing Tapuria and how much hype he's getting after his last fight... Uh, he ruined Josh Emmett. Yeah. After seeing that, Volk wants to fu- wants to fight Tapuria. Okay. So I think that's the biggest difference. It's not about what I think, what I want. The biggest difference is that. Fair. So. Fair. So, anyways, you've said it all. Anything else, Dino? I mean, we, I feel like we've gone on way too long, but yes. Yes. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Help us hit those next milestones. It is UFC 290 International Fight Week. And It'll we're gonna we're right. gonna try to maybe live stream. We're gonna at least record some videos. For sure. For sure. Again, thank you guys so much for just being here at the ground level. We really, really, truly appreciate it. We're just doing this shit because we love it, man. And I love you, bro. Thank you, brother. I love oh my you God. too. That's ground level Dino. I'm Dino Bam Bam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.